do it. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to ACMG TV. I'm your host, Xavier Josiah, here to always provide you with all things anime, comics, movies, and games. It has been a long hiatus from our holiday season, I know, but we got so much that we were working on and we got so much to talk about in regards to that because in 2015, there's gonna be a lot of changes. Uh, ACMG is expanding and uh, we're gonna talk about some of the things that we're gonna be doing to provide you with all things ACMG as well uh, in uh, the next hot topics. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna just just head right over to uh, a new Master Cow Theater segment, which we're going to be talking about the uh, DVD that just came out, Kickstarter Successful, Living in 8 Bits. Uh, the, for those of you who have seen the uh, first episode of the second season, I've actually interviewed this cast, and now they have successfully succeeded in getting uh, the money that they needed to come out with the DVDs. And let me tell you, uh, well, let me not tell you until, I, until Master Cow Theater comes on. But uh, there's going to be some interesting things that you're going to want to see about this DVD. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you're a fan of old school games and if you're a fan of great comedy skits, you're going to want to hang around for Master Cow Theater. So stick around for that. And lastly, uh, but certainly, certainly not least, we're going to have the Playground segment where I'm going to review Guilty Gear Zard for the PlayStation 4 because I'm now PlayStation 4 on our people. Ha <laughs> ha. So, um, inner geek moment. But um, definitely, I'm going to uh, review that and uh, utilize everything that I could possibly do to uh, review this game. And trust me when I tell you, you're gonna wanna check this out because it's well worth it. It was the first game that I ever got to play on a PlayStation 4 and wait, just wait and see whatever we're gonna talk about. So all of this and more in this episode of ACMG TV. Do it. 2015 is going to be a very interesting year for ACMG as we have officially expanded on some things and added some more content to make things uh, more exclusive to our group and make us the most significant group in all of Facebook. Uh, one of the things is uh, we're bringing back the Omega Fist Tournament or OFT2 uh, which is now subtitled Comic Book Tag Battle. Why is it asked that? Because for those of you who don't know, we've uh, made it last year as a fantasy fighting tournament for fighting games. This year we're changing it for comic books uh, and comic book characters at, at least. And uh, 12 contestants have entered to uh, the right to win this tournament. And they have the opportunity to pick two people from the comic book universe and face them up against another uh, member of the group to see who is the more dominant. The ACMG members will be the voting decided, deciding on who advances to the next tournament to see who has the actual dominant duo and who chose uh, strategically that will allow them to win this tournament. And the winner of the tournament will actually win a championship prize package courtesy of Printhead's custom print and design located at Old City Philadelphia. They are clients of Viewfinders Identity Search and Design, which is in fact my design firm. And uh, they were more than happy to be a part of this and provide this prize package. So uh, that will be very cool. And I'm also, on behalf of Viewfinders Identity Search and Design, adding on an extra bonus package that will be the Xbox uh, Live card or the PSN card of uh, the winner's choice, of course. Uh, they could pick one of them. And uh, that should be very fun. And if this works out, this will guarantee us that we will be doing this on a yearly basis. So uh, check it out, enjoy it, and let us know what you think about that contest as well. Also, in March, we will be having officially ACMG Hall of Fame. Uh, we have loved these uh, characters and movies and animes and video game characters and video games itself. Now it's time to give back and honor them. So uh, ACMG is officially going to have its own Hall of Fame, which will uh, which will be annually. We'll vote on you know uh, a number of different characters and categories to see who makes it to that uh, that brass ring, and we'll be a part of that. Also. One person, one actual member of ACMG will be inducted into the Members Hall of Fame, which uh, consists of you know those who have contributed consistently 
who brought in some significant uh, features to the page, who's added on to the page, we're gonna honor you for that. And we can't thank you all enough for all the effort and all the fun that you've been having and doing and stuff like that. So this is our way of giving back to you. So um, the Members Hall of Fame will be coming soon and one person a year will be inducted to that. And that is also provided by Print Heads will, that will be providing the uh, Members Hall of Fame package that you will get, which is a personalized mug and a personalized t-shirt for that as well. So uh, that should be fun. And uh, lastly, at this time, I'm going to announce that if you haven't noticed already, we have expanded to a blog page, which is called ACMG Warp Zone. ACMG Warp Zone will be your intricate, intimate page, exclusively mostly to you guys, that will talk about some of the things that are on your mind, some of the big things that we've talked about, and um, some of the things that, you know, we don't get to talk about at least. Uh, things that are, be, you know, so it'll be a mostly, you know, admin participated, but within a few, uh, Lou Johnson, who's our, one of our consummate members, B. Bundy Laws, also will be a part of this and he'll provide his input on things and, you know, he'll have those segments as well. Uh, Josie uh, Carr, myself, Andre Stokes, and if anybody feels that they have, uh, you know, that something's grinding their gears, they can also contact me as well. We can uh, talk about getting you to, you know, put forth on your opinions on things as well, the things that you uh, feel that you want to express. So that's what that's for. We uh, are more than happy to have brought that out, and um, this should be really fun. Uh, we do have more to talk about, and uh, and the time goes by when things solidify more. So it should be interesting. Once that do, you damn sure know that we will. Uh, excuse me, that we will announce it soon. So. Um, that is all for now, people. Um, let's head over to Master Cal's Theater. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me run down this list to you. Uh, what happens when you mix modern day comedy skits with the likes of Zelda, Duck Hunt, Tecmo Bowl, Super Mario Brothers, Metroid, the Game Genie, the Power Pad and the Power Glove, uh, Street Fighter, NES Pro Wrestling, and a horde of other great legendary classic games that we've all loved as we grew up. Well, you get the uh, show called Living in 8 Bits. Living in 8 Bits is a comedy skit show that started in YouTube and has now sprouted out and evolved into now a three disc set thanks to Kickstarter, which I was actually a part of. I had the pleasure of interviewing uh, the cast members, some of the cast members uh, during the first episode of our uh, ACMG TV show. And I gotta tell you, these guys are some of the most charismatic and entertaining guys I've ever been around uh, thus far. And it really shows on this uh, three disc set. Uh, the disc also has, a, you know, meat and potatoes commentary. Uh, it has, you know, all sorts of different uh, behind the scenes type of uh, features with it. But all the long, it, you know, the meat and potatoes is the skits itself. There's 50 episodes that span from at least about a minute and a little bit over maybe five minutes or so, you know, it stretches long, but all of it is very entertaining. Uh, I, from the moment I started watching it, it was just, my mouth was dropped, my eyes popped the whole time. Um, the characters that some of these actors portrayed was done with such conviction and, you know, really passionately done. Um, it was very well recorded. Uh, the, the picture resolution, the cameras that they were using for it, it's just, you know, I wish this, you know, what my resolution looked right right now would look anywhere near that uh, right now. But they put in the effort and the money and funds to do so, and it looks great. I mean, this is a key to that passion that they have. Um, Michael L, actually, I only say Michael L because I literally will probably butcher his actual last name. Uh, Michael L, who is a part of uh, the ACMG family, uh, is one of the main guys, uh, you know, that put this together. and. You know, he's a uh, part of uh, the company Mixed Nuts Productions. You can check him out at MixedNutsProductions.com along with all their other projects there as well. And uh, him along with the other actors and, you know, just so many actors in here. So many well-placed talent in this uh, show. And you could tell that they all really have played or have, you know, experienced playing these games before. They, they, they're all gamers. They're all love of the genre. And it shows definitely here. Some of my favorite episodes, um, The Whistle, which is like Zelda, you know, based. And pretty much he, 
he actually had the whistle that, you know, if you remember playing the Zelda, some, one of the Zelda games, he actually had the whistle where he blows and plays a tune, and he gets teleported by a whirlwind to another place, and he uses this in a real world type of situation. It is hilarious. Um, the Duck Hunt dog appears in this disc, and it's a uh, disc set as well. So for all those who rather hated or loved that dog, you will definitely love this skit as well. Um, Tecmo Bowl Zigzag was, you know, the zigzag uh, skit was very funny. One of the best lines air, uh, that I heard on here, don't hurt the earth. You did not zigzag! I did like Dude, did we talked about zigzag! What is, what is this? What is, what is, what is that? I did that? the thing where you told me. Nothing! Don't hurt the earth. I want that to be a t-shirt, people. Get on it. <laughs> so, um, that was, I thought that was pretty funny. The Goombas from the Super Mario Brothers, you know, trying to be politically correct. You've got to see that one. Um, there were so many skits and so many, uh, this is like 50 skits all together. Uh, I didn't really take uh, time to keep track of the time as to how long it goes, but I noticed that it does, you know, span a bit longer in time, but it's still yet entertaining nonetheless. Um, it's just so much that they capture, they capture so much and in detail of some of the things that we've all experienced, you know, during uh, our tenure playing the old NES systems and such. And it was amazing to go back and like, yes, I remember having to go through that when I was, uh, when I was a kid, especially uh, the special moves uh, skit where they try to figure out how to do a fireball. And you know, when you're playing on a controller like this and you're trying to learn a fireball, and you keep moving your, your character left and right. They capture that perfectly. It makes total sense. There's a lot of logic to the gaming side as well as blended in with the modern day technology, you know, modern day society, sociological side at least. And uh, it was just so well done. I, I enjoyed it very much. I look forward to seeing what these guys do next. And, you know, kudos to them and to more of what they're going to do for this series. Uh, 50 episodes deep, they're going to keep it going, so uh, we look forward to seeing more from it. But guys, I highly recommend you checking out Living in 8 Bits. Uh, again, these are some of the most funniest characters I've seen yet, and um, I definitely highly recommend it. You can go on their website at uh, mixnutsproductions.com and uh, you can pretty much find out where you can get your disc at as well because it's now in production. And uh, great job, guys. I love the cover. Love everything about it. Every disc is on here. Again, you got commentary, you have behind the scenes. This is a credit to all the hard work that is happening because they are making it right now. So uh, kudos to them, highly recommend it. Living in 8 Bits, uh, check it out. Alright folks, I'm here to talk about my very first PlayStation 4 experience and that being Guilty Gear Zard for the PlayStation 4 exclusively. Um, how I felt about this game is pretty much the same. It kind of reminds me of when I first got my uh, first DVD player ever. Um, the movie that I purchased to get the full impact of what a DVD player can offer was The Matrix, which I'm sure a lot of you guys did the same thing. Uh, the quality, the resolution, the lights, the sound, all this stuff, it met it up with an original concept that just blew us away. So Guilty Gear Zar did exactly the same thing for me in the sense that it did stuff that no, no other game or fighting game for that matter has done before. It brought an anime to life. Um, the, it's all hand drawn, but it's also 3D in itself, made into a 2.5D format, uh, which is, you know, like side scrolling for those who don't uh, know that. But when you actually defeat an opponent in a certain way, it, the camera scrolls 360 all around the actual uh, screen, and it looks tremendous. You can't believe that this is actually this is actually the game itself. Um, the animation alone, the character design all together, it looks phenomenal. Um, never have we thought that we would make it to this point that we actually feel like we're playing an actual anime. Uh, you know in this day and age every generation of video games that we come and there's a fighting game especially or any other like a role playing Japanese role playing game and it gives you closer to that feel of actually controlling an actual anime character or being a part of an anime series Guilty Gear has met it to a T and um, I think they have done what they set out to do and that's supersede SNK their predecessors the ones that you know I think they pattern themselves out of um, I think they've superseded them so much and done with no other, even Capcom to a certain extent, has done what they, you know, our, our, our access games and um, 
and uh, Arc System Works has done the unthinkable in this case. And it's so well done. Um, the cool part that I love about it is that um, one, the interaction of the characters and the cutscenes are mostly real time. So it's like they're actually, those are actually the characters in the game for the most part. Um, so you do that. The options for the game as well, it's like you have your normal arcade mode, which is the initial story mode that you play through. And there's also MOM mode for those of you who remember that from previous uh, Guilty Gear games where you play to get coins and there's coins you use to purchase stuff in the gallery and such. But arcade mode is your meat and potatoes of what you play through. You must play through that mode. They recommend that you play through that mode because then there's story mode, which is not actually a fighting um, uh, mode, but it's actually an episodic game series that gets you so deep into the universe. And now it's all in English and in uh, Japanese. So for those of you who are not subtitled, uh, buffs um, you can actually you know watch the actual you know and listen to them actually talk and you they also have the options of reading doing the Japanese voices as well but I think the uh, English uh, voice actors is tremendous you may recognize some of these guys from uh, other anime series as well so they didn't pay no expense on talent on this game uh, trust me not um, the cool part also I loved about it was the sound the sound was really well done, so to the point it kind of freaked me out, and I say this because I had no idea that the actual controller here um, was in fact a built-in speaker within this. So there are times when, like most of the games that I found out after the fact, that they, this thing actually talks. <laughs> it, you know, there's sound that comes from here, and it automatically just, it, it's just like this Dolby surround sound type of feel to it. It freaked me out at first and kind of still freaks me out in certain games uh, that I'll still play, but it, it's a great addition. I thought it was a great idea for uh, Sony to do that for the system as well. Really brings it, it uh, gets you deeper into the experience. Um, one of the coolest things that I do love about this and any other game on PlayStation 4, but this especially, is the fact that I can play this on my PS Vita with no problems. And I've had the chance to play it on a PS Vita. Um, you got great Wi-Fi, you're gonna have a great experience with this. Um, it plays, it, there's no lag in time. There's, it just literally on your screen is the full resolution version, exactly the way you see it on your TV screen. Uh, there's no lag, I'm serious, there's no actual lag in time at all. I can watch TV and play on my PlayStation Vita with no, with virtually any problems. There, there was, you know, if, if too many uh, things are playing, then yeah, it kind of, you know, stitches out for a minute and it kind of goes out. But for the most part, it, I've had a great experience with that. And as you, you know, see right here, it actually plays perfectly. And you, you see it, it, it doesn't, there's like no lag in time. It just, you know, simultaneously, I love that part. I guess my only negative about this game is the online experience. Um, I've played a lot of Xbox Live before and they seem to be a lot easier to connect to players and play along. This wasn't the thing. I think this was a very complex and convoluted way of doing it. I tried to connect with one of the members of ACMG a while back when I first started and I, it just took me through so many different ports that to the point I could not find them. It was, it was so frustrating at the point so I, I just opt out of doing that. This is why I play um, one player experience games right now. I don't know if every other game does that, but that, you know, particularly that's the only negative I have about Guilty Gear are, but that takes absolutely nothing away from the experience that you will have with this game. So in fact, I still give this an A plus, no doubt, without a doubt. So if you haven't gotten a chance to play Guilty Gear Zard for the PlayStation 4, if you're an Xbox player, Go over to your friend's house, go to go to a game store or something like that, have them play it for you, let, try it out. It's fun. It's extremely fun. It is a tournament-based style game. Um, so, you know, you have that going for you. It's very technical, so it's really cool. Air, you know, you know all the air combos and everything you can pull off, very cool. Um, give this an A+. Plus. So, Guilty Gear Zard for the PlayStation 4, check it out. That is it for now. Um, we'll talk about more to come next week. There's never a dull moment in the world of anime, comics, movies, and games. We still got Talk Time episodes. We still got the Omega Fist Tournament, which will be coming along. So, we'll discuss all that and more. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Have a good week. Take care.